Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about anaphylaxis. So let's get into it. So normally, the immune system produces antibodies to help us fight against foreign invaders, things that wish to cause us harm or make us sick. And that is a good thing. We like that. We want it to do that. But in anaphylaxis, it's overreacting to something, a foreign invader. Some common triggers include things like peanuts, latex, shellfish, penicillin, pollen, and then getting stung by like a bee, a wasp, a yellow jacket, a hornet, any of those kinds of things, any of those kinds of uh, bugs with stingers on them. Some people are so, so sensitive to these triggers that they might not even need to be ingesting them, like peanuts, for example. Maybe you don't eat the peanuts. Maybe you're not eating something that contains peanuts, but it was made in a factory where they have peanuts. So you can have a reaction to that because you're so sensitive to that. Even the smell of certain things can trigger this reaction. So being aware of this and our patient's triggers, what they're allergic to is very, very important. And then the other cause, I kind of wanted to throw this out here, idiopathic anaphylaxis, that's where we don't know what the cause is. So you had a reaction, but we're not quite sure to what. Some signs and symptoms your patient might present with include hives, itching, hypotension, weak and rapid pulse, dizziness or fainting, shortness of breath, and constriction of the airway. And you might be able to hear wheezing as well if you listen to their lungs. So when do these symptoms usually present? Within five to 30 minutes after exposure to that trigger. There is a second wave of symptoms called biphasic anaphylaxis. So this is after these initial symptoms kind of go away these new ones come back, okay? So they come back in a second wave. This can occur hours to days after the initial signs and symptoms appeared. So yes, emergency, we wanna know within that first you know, little bit, we wanna treat them. But also we wanna be aware that this biphasic anaphylaxis can occur and they can have symptoms again. When it comes to treatment, the gold standard, the best treatment is epinephrine, AKA adrenaline. Maybe you've heard this referred to as an EpiPen. An EpiPen is what's considered an auto-injector, which means you can inject it into the patient or the patient could inject it into themselves. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about in regards to the EpiPen. First of all, if this patient is a pregnant person, you want them to lie on their left side because that's going to help with blood flow to the placenta. This can be given either IM or sub-Q but I am is superior. So if you have the opportunity, please try to give it intermuscularly. And then there's a little bit of debate about whether this is necessary or not, um, but ideally you would get the patient in the Trendelenburg's position. So flip them upside down. Why? Because that's going to increase blood flow to the heart and it's going to help with that hypotension. There are some people, like if you look this up, you will see that there are some people who say, this is just extra, you don't need to do it, as long as they're supine, it's okay. And then there's other people who are like, no, you have to put them in Trendelenburgs. So there's a little bit of a debate about it, but when in doubt, it's not gonna hurt them, it's only gonna help them, so I recommend Trendelenburgs position. Other things you're going to do, you're gonna give them oxygen, especially if there's shortness of breath or constriction of the airway. You might wanna give albuterol, You'll give IV antihistamines or cortisone or both. Worst case scenario, the patient might need to be intubated. And if there's a failed intubation due to the constriction of the airway, you can't do it or anesthesia or the doctor can't do it. Of course, we don't intubate. But if the patient is unable to be intubated, the last resort is a tracheostomy. And this is going to put an opening in their airway so that they can breathe. Anaphylaxis is serious and life-threatening, and we need to take it seriously. Some potential complications your patient might experience include things like brain damage, kidney failure, arrhythmias, and even death. So that is why very prompt treatment and identification of symptoms is going to be the key to caring for these patients. Also, 
educating about prevention. That's going to be important too. So what are some things you can tell them? First, they should have a medical alert bracelet so that if they are found unresponsive, people can identify, okay, they have these allergies. They should keep an emergency kit. A lot of times people keep it in their car. So an emergency kit should contain an auto injector like the EpiPen. Ideally, there would be two of them that way you have a backup one. When you have your emergency kit, it's very important that you check it regularly to make sure it hasn't expired because you don't want to be in an emergent situation and you go to give yourself the injection and oh, it's expired. Okay, so making sure you're checking your kit regularly and then switching it out if it is expired. If your triggers are food related, like for example, peanuts, you want to read food labels very carefully to make sure that there is no peanuts in it or it's not made in a factory that contains peanuts that uses peanut products. If your uh, trigger is like bees, insects, wasps, things like that, you want to use caution around those. You don't want to excite them or get attention to yourself from the insects, right? So wear long sleeves and pants if you know you're going to be around an area where there are insects. They like perfume. They like bright colors because they're looking for flowers, right? So don't make yourself look like a flower. Um, and then ideally, you would get allergy tested. That's going to help you identify your triggers so you know when to use caution. So that was my video on anaphylaxis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.